Margaret Preston was formerly known by the 1920s as one of Australia's leading modernist artists. During World War I, she had situated herself in Paris and Britain, developing a practice of post-Impressionism paintings. In 1920, she moved to Australia after marrying William Preston and expanded her practice to the wider cultural issues of Australia during the new modernity era. Landscape painting became her main focus within the 1930s as she moved to a town north of Sydney to study Aboriginal culture. By the 1940s, Preston had developed a very knowledgeable understanding of the New South Wales landscapes. Her time was spent travelling around Australia, studying the countryside and native plants. Later on in 1948, Preston arrived in Bendigo. Her time spent there resulted in the work Winter in Bendigo, Alexandra Fountain. This painting depicts the heart of central Bendigo in the cold months of winter. It is quite clear that Preston created the work to narrate a story of the busy day-to-day -day life within the city, as this was something she admired. Alexandra Fountain is positioned in the middle of the work, which makes it this grand, eye-catching fountain. Many shop fronts can be seen in the background, Cars are travelling along the road and many people are seated around the fountain, which depicts a popular location to meet and enjoy the company of others. During the 1900s, the gold mining rush had come to an end around the central gold fields. In Bendigo, the population had dropped from 30,000 to 17,000 people as a result and developed into a place of manufacturing. From 1920, the population of Bendigo increased gradually, with tramways, railways and soft drink factories as major employers. Light is used sparingly, as you can see in the top section of the painting. There is no clear sense of sunlight shining from one direction. This indicates that the day was in fact cloudy or overcast. The artist has chosen to create a gloomy space in relation to the dark tones that are used around the fountain and on the buildings. It is important to note the only traces of colour seem to be present on people's clothing attire, signage and the top of the buildings situated in the background. Could the traces of red symbolise something important to the artist? What is interesting is how the oil paint has been applied to create this grain effect. It works particularly well to capture a sense of muddy dirt roads and the old Victorian buildings. The artist has chosen not to create this beautiful pristine painting, but capture the true sense of the rural city. Preston's approach to the work could be considered from the post-impressionism era. This is because of the little detail that has been applied. This is not only true in regards to the painting as a whole, however the tall buildings located behind the fountain. The detail of the buildings and trees on the right hand side have been applied in a more free and loose manner. The thick application of paint in certain sections of the work, such as the ground, trees and buildings, suggests other characteristics of post-impressionism. The work leaves us feeling as if we have taken a step back in time where a beige Victorian building can be located in every street and on every corner. Alexandra Fountain, centred in the middle of the work, suggests the people of Bendigo were proud of what they had accomplished as a result of the enormous financial success of the central goldfields.